it going? Okay. Yo, what is up guys? It is your lucky day. So today I'm going to give you an unfiltered, uncut look at my drug cabinets. There are four of them actually. So first of all, you're probably thinking, Connor, you're showing us all your drugs. You have hundreds of drugs right here. Like, come on, you drug addict. Not only are you a drug addict, but you're promoting drugs to the youth. Like, wh what are you doing? Okay, so first of all, do you guys even know what a drug is? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever considered it? Have you ever looked up the definition of drug? Well, you actually, let's do it. Do we have a phone here, Perry? One sec. Go over to my golfing environment over here to grab my phone. Other phone. <laughs> all right, so let's look up the definition of drug. D-R-U-G, drug. Define, define drugs, what are drugs, okay. Okay, drug, can we zoom in on this? This is very important. A medicine or other substance which has a physiological effect when ingested or otherwise introduced into the body, okay? In other words, there is nothing on the fucking planet that is not a drug. Because literally anything when introduced into the body, has a physiological effect by the definition of physiological effect, okay? So a lot of people, they make emotional decisions. They hear the word drug. It incites some sort of emotion. And then they make emotional decisions instead of logical decisions. Drug is essentially a word developed with a specific connotation that the matrix uses to prevent you from taking what they don't want you to take. Are some drugs good? Potentially. Are some drugs bad? Potentially. So it's up for you to do your research and decide, and everyone's different. Individual variability plays a huge role, you know? One drug might be beneficial for one person, but one drug might not be beneficial for the other person. So, without further ado, let's start out with the bodybuilding shelf. Okay. So, these are my main bodybuilding supplements. This is my favorite supplement of all time. The name is just absolutely genius. This is Black Cox. I love putting Black Cox in my mouth. It's actually one of the reasons why I partnered with this supplement company because I saw the name. It's absolutely genius, okay? So these are the testosterone boosters. These boosted my testosterone significantly. Uh, last year, my testosterone was 300 nanograms per deciliter. A double dose of this for just a couple weeks boosted it up to like 700, which is great. I believe my testosterone is extremely high right now. I've got my testosterone all the way up to 1,120 utilizing uh, enclomiphene, but so I'm actually going to be competing in golf soon. So I, I kind of want to stay away from any of the banned supplements that are you know, prohibited by WADA. So no enclomiphene at the moment. My testosterone is already super high, okay? I actually practice semen retention, not religiously, but I'd say I come on average about twice a week or something like that compared to every day. That's going to be a huge difference, a positive difference in your testosterone. So my testosterone, I would almost consider it superfluous. And so I don't really need my testosterone any higher. So blue ox and black ox are sufficient. Uh, I do take MK677 intermittently, especially when I need to recover. So let's say I have, you know, a slight, some slight back pain from golf. My back is sore. I'll definitely pop an MK677. But again, I do have to wean off that before I compete in golf, along with BPC-157. These are very synergistic, right? Because BPC-157 actually increases uh, the expression on the growth hormone receptor, right? So it makes this more powerful, which is cool. So, what else? Phytoturk, Turkesterone, that works to an extent. You know, it's not a magic pill, but I actually take a lot of it. And if you do take a lot of it, it will have some sort of effect. Slim pills, slim pills are always important to take with MK677 because these help mitigate the potential for insulin resistance, as does metformin. Metformin is actually probably the more powerful option. I'm not sure if you can just get that in the United States, but in Thailand, you can just pick this up in a pharmacy, which is amazing. What else? So these are more health-based supplements. So Tudka, that's great for the liver. Uh, we also have heart, liver, and kidney support from Enhanced Labs. This is a a blend of different herbal supplements, relatively natural. And uh, salt palmetto, which is great, also good for hair loss. This blocks DHT uh, systemically, but usually not enough to elicit side effects, which is great. Uh, we have some NAD+, which is one of the most 
you know, well-known supplements for longevity purposes. Uh, magnesium, many different types of magnesium. So different people respond differently to different types of magnesium. Different types of magnesium are, have different bioavailabilities for different people. So it's good to incorporate a wide variety of magnesium in your supplementation regimen. Creatine, of course, almost forgot that. Creatine. I actually don't take it every day. I actually will like megadose it, you know, every week or so. I'll take like 30 grams or something, right? Which is about the same as taking, you know, a normal scoop once per day. But you don't need to take it every day. You could just take a large dose once a week. And that's actually what I prefer to do for convenience sake. Okay, that's enough of this cabinet. Who? which one should we go to next? Let's go to this one. Okay, so this is my nootropic cabinet, okay? So on the bottom here, these are some really powerful neuroregenerative supplements. Dihexa, uh, NSI-189. You can get these from SwissChems.is, code plus if you would like. These are super powerful though. So I do take these sometimes. I'm not on them right now. I'll run cycles with them. It's super important if you're taking these, you wanna have your autophagy high. Autophagy is essentially your body's natural cell recycling process. It kills off old damaged cells, particularly cancer cells. And if so, if you're in a super neuroregenerative state, your body is constantly building new brain cells, you wanna make sure that you don't have any cancer growing in your brain, or else, of course, these could amplify the cancer. But if your autophagy is high enough, you know, if you do enough fasting, or if you're just healthy enough in general, it's not something to worry about. Do I worry about cancer from taking this? No, because I fast all the time. In fact, I'm about to do a seven, four, five, six, seven day fast to an attempt to cure a slight little ailment that I have. I'll update you guys more about that, probably on my main channel soon. Anyway, so we have some mushrooms here, mushroom blends, cordyceps, lion's mane, reishi. You can see what these are utilized for. It's funny, so lion's mane actually recently developed a not so great reputation. Ryan Russo claimed that he experienced post finasteride like symptoms from taking lion's mane. Right? Lion's mane is super beneficial. It increases BDNF in the brain, so it's very neuroregenerative. It's great for cognitive functioning. But he experienced like sexual side effects as if he had just taken finasteride. Finasteride is a hair loss medication that blocks DHT systemically, right? DHT is an anabolic hormone responsible for, you know, some sexual function processes in the body, right? But I've megadosed this. I've experimented with megadosing this and it experienced no side effects whatsoever. So everyone's different. Obviously the placebo effect slash nocebo effect plays a role here as well. So be cautious, you know, be cautious with your physiological processes, but also your mental processes. Okay, we have Fenaboot here. So this is amazing. I mean, this makes you feel fairly euphoric. If you have an addictive personality, I would be cautious of this because this can be somewhat addictive, but I use this with a, what I would consider a fairly unprecedented tapering process, right? So I actually taper this off before I cease using it. So real quick, basically I would take like three pills in the morning, two at night and one the next day. So it slowly gradually leaves my system so I don't experience any withdrawals when I take this, but this is amazing, okay? Then we have some nootropics, Genius 2.0. I mean, this is one of my favorites. This is the supplement that Leo helped develop. And it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it's a nootropic that you actually feel. It has the salience equivalent to, I would say, a couple cups of coffee if you take a full dose of this. I mean, you will absolutely feel this. So this is awesome. You know, these are some other just like nootropic blends that I got off Lazada. This is some lithium. So, you know, I was actually fairly skeptical of this at first because this is actually a medication that's used to treat different psychological disorders like uh, bipolar, I believe. And so I was a little skeptical about this, but Brian Johnson, the longevity pioneer, he utilizes this for brain and nervous system support. So I thought, why not? So lithium I do take. Now this is my favorite supplement of all time. This is Syrian root. So this is positively implicated in essentially every physiological process in the body. I mean, this is incredible. This actually really increases autophagy, right? Well, homologous to fasting, which is awesome. Uh, if I had to recommend like one supplement, it would probably be this. Uh, look this up, it's called a Penangum Harmala. That would be the scientific name. But the literature reviews on this are just absolutely mind blowing how healthy this is. It's been used traditionally for, in, in ancient cultures for, for many, many, many years. And I love this. This also allows a DMT to become orally bioavailable, right? So it's an MAOI, a monomine oxidase inhibitor. 
So it's actually also used as like an antidepressant. It's amazing. I have some Mosa hostilis up there. Okay, nice. Okay, so my diethyl ether. This is one of the most interesting supplements. I'm not quite certain that I can call it a biohacking supplement yet, although it does act as an NM, NMDA, I believe, receptor antagonist, which would be similar to something like ketamine. It also acts through the GABA pathway, which would be similar to something like alcohol. So it makes you feel similar to the combination of those two compounds when you inhale it. But, you know, me and Tony Huge have done so much research on this, and we believe that it is healthy. I mean, you don't see any negative effects in rats until you basically expose them to large quantities of it for like days straight, right? So I, you know, again, I'm not sure enough to like promote this yet, but this is a very, very, very intriguing supplement. These are Sananga eye drops. So ancient tribes actually use these to enhance their vision before hunting. And so should I, should I do these right now, Theron? Should I take some? These really, really burn your eyes. But, you know, anytime you put yourself voluntarily through some sort of uncomfortable experience, through some sort of pain, man, it's, it's hot in here. I'm, I'm sweating my ass off. We should have turned the AC on, but the AC is bad for the audio, right? But that's okay. Maybe the ab will start glistening up from the sweat. Anyway, so yeah, Sananga. Anytime you put yourself through some sort of voluntary uncomfortable experience, whether that be sauna, cold plunge, you know, like acupuncture, it releases a lot of dopamine afterwards, right? And so that in and of itself, the positive effect from the dopamine that's released from going through an uncomfortable experience is, it gives us enough value. Does it have any value beyond that? I mean, it certainly stimulates the eyes. I'm sure it draws blood into the eyes, which of course helps, but does it have any like magical properties beside that? Probably not, but I mean, should we, t should we take this and I mean, this could be pretty fun for the camera. Oh. Mm. Yeah, you'll get used to this after a while. You know, your pain toler tolerance will gradually increase. But, you know, the first time I did this, I was, like, sitting in my room for 10 minutes just in immense pain. But now I, I can pretty much handle the pain and it goes away in, you know, a minute or so. So yeah, let's move on to the next cabinet. Yeah, so the other health and longevity supplements, I say these are more experimental type health and longevity supplements. These are like your absolute basic health and longevity supplements. These, I'm more interested in these. These are more interesting to me. So, I mean, and again, I don't have time to go in depth over each one of these. There's a lot here. But you know, we have like Shilajit in gummy form. Fear likes to take supplements in gummy form. So Shilajit, you know, in the spiritual community, ostensibly, this detoxifies your pineal gland in the brain. Very good for cognitive function. Uh, sea moss, Irish sea moss. So Connor Murphy, you know, I'm Irish. So I thought that if this benefits anyone, it probably benefits me. But sea moss supposedly has a lot of benefits as well. And this also contains a lot of other vitamins, apple cider vinegar, vitamin D, vitamin C, stuff like that. Uh, so one of the main supplements in here that I really appreciate is something like Reservatrol, right? So this is a compound that's found in red wine. This is why people say that red wine is so healthy, right? So this is supposedly very healthy for longevity, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, we have like this stem cell brand that I, brand, blend that I just got off Lazada. You know, it has different fruit extracts, and it also has Reservatrol as well. So, yeah, this is actually a super powerful nootropic slash stimulant. I, I take very sparingly, right? But it has caffeine and uh, a lot of other different, you know, energy-enhancing compounds. So I haven't taken this in a while, but you gotta make sure to use the stimulants very infrequently, or you'll develop a tolerance, and then at baseline, you'll feel kind of shitty. So spirulina, right? This is a seaweed. Spirulina and corella are supposedly extremely healthy. So anything that comes from the sea, as long as it's not contaminated with heavy metals, it's probably pretty healthy. 
So turmeric, of course, you guys probably know about turmeric, extremely anti-inflammatory, has black pepper extract to help it become more bioavailable. So I take that as well. Al oh, alpha GPC here. That's another nootropic. And yeah, you know, uh, lutein and Z. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that, but this is very good for eyesight. We have different, you know, extracts, different plant extracts, pine bark. Oh, grass-fed beef liver extract. That's supposedly extremely healthy as well. So yeah, okay, so the last cabinet would be my hair loss cabinet. So I actually have a very interesting hair loss protocol that incorporates a lot of different techniques and supplements, which I'll probably do a video about that, a full length video on the 90 plus protocol, this YouTube channel. But, you know, I have been growing my hair back over the years, you know, I mean, relative to when I was 13 years old, of course, I'm balding. But over the past few years, I've been experimenting a lot and I have been gradually growing it back. I really appreciate the whole biohacking experimentation endeavor. And so, yeah, what is that face for, Fairy? Are you okay? You're just really hot or you tired or what? Yeah, we should have, the air is off, so we're getting really sweaty in here, but the video is almost done, don't worry. Okay, uh, this is very interesting, IGF-1 spray. So if you actually look up studies on IGF-1, supposedly it's very good for hair growth. So I spray that, on, this is out right now, I'm out of this, so I need to get more. Uh, these are just different sprays that enhance blood flow on the scalp. This is actually dutasteride, right? So actually the stronger version of finasteride. I take this very infrequently. So maybe once a week or once every two weeks, I'll pop one of these pills just to mitigate my systemic DHT a little bit, but mostly I wanna mitigate my DHT on my scalp. But again, yeah, I'll go into the hair loss stuff in another video. Oh, but you should probably know about this one. RU58841, you can get this from Swiss Chems. Uh, Code Plus, Enhanced Labs as well for all the bodybuilding supplements, Code Plus. But this blocks DHT on, on the scalp. You use this topically. And this is what actually Derek from More Plates, More Dates used to grow back his hair. And it, it was extremely successful for him. So this is one of the best topical compounds that you can put on your scalp to help regrow your hair. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We also, of course, have colloidal gold being cooked in the lab, in the kitchen. But, oh, I'm, oh, I forgot the nicotine. So, of course, some nicotine pouches. Uh, in, in America, you guys know Zin, right? Zin is very popular in America, but nicotine. So, it's, it's neuroregenerative. Studies show it to be extremely beneficial to the brain. It can be addictive, but you wanna associate the nicotine with something that you should be doing. So for example, I only take this nicotine while I'm working and being productive. And nicotine in and of itself, I would consider fairly healthy. Smoking is not because it contaminates the lungs, uh, inhibits blood flow, reduces endothelial function, right? So smoking nicotine, I would consider not healthy, but ingesting it or putting a nicotine patch on your skin or something like that, I would actually consider healthy. So, yeah, that's basically it. Quick physique shot. Physique is looking pretty good. I am about to go on a fast, so I will probably slim down over the next few days, but it'll come back pretty fast. But yeah, anyway, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.